Ask five people what gold or silver to buy, and you're going to get somewhere between six and, I don't know, 60 answers. It's just the wisdom of crowds. They mean well. They just don't always give you much to go on. So we've covered buying fractional gold here before. I think it's an important topic. It's one that I have some experience with. I made a run for like seven years buying American Gold Eagles in the quarter ounce size. This is a topic that's also pretty divisive though. You're gonna have people telling you that buying smaller fractional gold is a really bad way to go. And then you'll have other people who are telling you, hey, you'll get your money back on that premium. It just doesn't matter. And you might hear people saying that silver is a lot like fractional gold, so that's the way to go. In other words here, everyone has an opinion, but we're gonna try to work through this in a way that should help you figure out what's best for you. Now, before we get back to it, if you're looking for precious metals, hit up SD Bullion. New customers even get gold and silver for spot. It's sdbullion.com slash new. So let's start out by cutting up some of that advice. Anyone telling you to only buy one ounce of gold either has the discretionary capital to do it, to buy that one ounce coin regularly, or they have the patience and the discipline to hold off while they save. Now, if you're not patient and you're not comfortable with a $2,000 purchase, this is pretty tough advice. And I just don't think $2,000 should be the entry level for gold. So backing up to what I was doing, for seven years I was buying one quarter ounce gold eagles more than anything else really. I was losing money on those purchases, but I knew it. Not only was I paying more for the quarters, I was then trading them for one ounce coins along the way. So those of you who say, hey, you'll get your premium back on those smaller coins. Well, between us, I was giving that back too. So this is just me telling you what you're getting into here, giving you a little bit of a clue to who you're listening to. I was doing the thing that people will tell you not to do. I switched gears more recently. The last three years, I've been buying one ounce gold coins almost exclusively. That's because the premium shot up on fractional in 2020 and because I've been spending more on a regular basis. It just didn't make sense to buy the more expensive coins. So the reason that I'm showing the Eagles here today is that's what I was buying. So the premium increase in 2020, while that was across the board, it affected everything, it was significantly worse for Eagles. I've been paying 9% at the top for quarter ounce eagles for seven years. Sometimes it was 7%. I was paying 3% for the one ounce coins. So what I would do a lot of the times is I would buy three of the quarters. And then for that fourth purchase, I'd take them in, I'd put that toward the one ounce version. So the fourth purchase, I'd walk away with the one ounce coin. Once in a while, I would walk in with four quarters and I'd walk out with one one ounce coin. The shop owner would let me trade them even up. So at the time I was losing $20, every time I bought a quarter ounce Eagle. That's the difference between that 9% and 3% to thereabout. In spot, it was $1,300 to $1,400 range. So $20 lost to each quarter ounce purchase. Now for me, I was happy to pay that extra $20 to keep the price down on each purchase. You could say that I might have lost $60 every four months to those extra premiums, but you could also say that because I was fine with a sub $400 purchase each month, I stuck with it. So I picked up, what, 21 ounces of gold over those seven years that I might not have otherwise bought. A $1,400 purchase, I might have gagged on it. So that was a time when buying was boring. I've talked about that recently. So buying was smart. But when spot price is low, so is motivation. At least that's what I've found. It's not as exciting to buy coins when the price is not shooting up. So you update that buying strategy for 2023 though, and you really need to find another gold coin that, or just ignore those premiums in YOLO in because a quarter ounce American Gold Eagle, they have premiums 20% and up, easy. So when I was spending $20 back then, well today it would be spending more like an extra $100 or more. So if you're hearing me say, yeah, fractionals are a good buy potentially, and you're seeing these eagles on the desk, well, hold up because a quarter ounce Philharmonic has about a 12% premium on a quarter ounce coin, sometimes even lower than that. That's the premium level that I would shoot for. Krugerrands, Maples, Kangaroos, Britannias, they can all be found at least off and on. Now, another thing that's important to me is the form factor of the coin itself. That goes into all of this. This is hard to explain on camera, but these quarter ounce American Gold Eagles are 22 millimeters in diameter, and that's still a good size. Now, if you want 22 millimeter 
diameter coins, you're looking at Philharmonics, Krugerrands, and Britannias. A Royal Canadian Mint, Perth Mint, for whatever reason, their quarter ounce gold coins are 20 millimeter. Now, if you said you wanted 24 karat only, you're then looking at Philharmonics or Britannias, but all five of those are great coins. They're good options to me, just something to consider. So if we were gonna use that 12% premium as a level for quarter ounce coins and 6% as the level for one ounce coins, well, you'd be losing $30 per one ounce coin, paying 6% more on the quarter than you would on the full ounce. So if you only bought quarter ounce gold rather than one ounce, you'd pay an additional $120 per ounce of gold. And that adds up. Some people are gonna look at that extra $120 and they're gonna think only a dummy would pay that extra premium. Now others are gonna look at it, they're gonna say they think they'll get that extra premium back or that the more flexible size is worth it. And then some would just be where I was thinking more about the cost of each additional purchase, preferring to pay $550 on a schedule, monthly, whatever, rather than $2,080 every fourth month. So if we're being smart, the one ounce option is the way to go. I think that's the objective answer. Just put some cash in a gold envelope each month and then make your purchase when it's full. But a hundred little things play into this question. Sometimes buying the smaller coins is just easier, maybe even more practical in your case. It is an objective. Really, it's just me saying that I understand the draw toward that. I also understand that patience is easier when you already have years of gold built up. It's harder when you're just starting out. Now, everything that I've said so far also applies to the one tenth ounce gold size as well. It's just more so. It's kind of exaggerated. Premiums are higher, total prices lower. So I don't think that we're in the objective category anymore. This isn't one size fits all advice territory. There are reasons that a person only wants to spend $225 on a purchase. And any logic that shows that they're wasting X percent on premium, it's essentially not even relevant because if you're targeting a one tenth ounce gold coin, you probably aren't doing it simply because you don't want that one ounce. You're doing it because it's way more convenient. Okay, so maybe you've been wondering why that silver's peeking out back there. Silver is the same. I'm not gonna dive into this one real far, but the popular opinion on silver I would say just does not line up with objective advice. The reason that I bring it up here is that a lot of people are going to say that silver is their fractional gold. Now, the part to consider here is whether you think silver will appreciate enough to cover that extra premium. So if you picked up comparable coins, the premiums on the silver coins are gonna be significantly higher than the premiums on the gold counterparts. That's just a fact. There is a huge difference. So most people looking for one ounce silver they drift toward rounds. That's not a comparable thing to these coins. Now, buying silver in general, it even leads you to generic 10 ounce bars. Now, I haven't bought silver much at all since 2020 because the premium shot up, but there are options that aren't quite so crazy. Now, the silver that I was already holding, this again is more of my story, but it was underwater until recently, really, I paid more on the premiums than the spot price had increased for like a decade. Now, that's a story that a lot of people just simply do not want to hear, but it's a case that could very well continue. And that's not a jab at silver. That's just a simple, objective look at the retail cost of silver. So the other reason that I bring up silver is that there's a point at the one tenth ounce gold coin level where I've always started to lean toward generic 10 ounce silver bars instead. Now this is weird because I don't have a 10th ounce gold coin on the desk, I don't have a silver bar on the desk, but in other words here, I feel like the 10 ounce silver is actually a better deal than the one tenth ounce gold coin. Now maybe that'll surprise you. I'm not saying that I prefer silver really at any point, just if I'm being honest, but any time that I've really looked into picking up the smaller gold coins like the one tenth ounce size, I have gotten caught up in that comparison and I've either bought the silver instead or I just passed. Now, if you're looking at the one tenth ounce coins though, I am not trying to turn you off from them. Like I said before, I don't think there's a one size fits all advice anywhere on this topic. And this really is a level that plays more off personal circumstances and preferences than anything else. And there's no reason to try to explain that to anyone else. It's really a case of you being the only one who really knows what's best for you. So what do you do? Now, if you're new to gold, you're wrestling with this decision for real, I would say there's no wrong answer. It's a little bit like that no mistakes 
only experience advice, but it does have the potential to cost you a lot more over time if you decide to go with the fractional. So the question that I think you should ask yourself is, could you move to the larger size, use slower intervals, and not really cause yourself any additional trouble? Now, if you can, you'll save some money. As for that silver, there's nothing saying that's not an option either. I would just say spend some time looking at the historical charts over the last decade to get a little bit of perspective. That will counterbalance some of the popular opinions about its price potential going forward. Just realize that silver doesn't owe you anything. It doesn't owe you a price run. Future gains, they're possible, but premiums are here today. And the same thing goes for those one tenth ounce gold coins. There's definitely nothing wrong with them, but it does take a pretty big run on spot price to get above those 20% premiums. And you can see higher premiums than that. So just keep in mind that a little bit of patience can save you some money. But at the end of the day, look, it's your decision. You just need to do what makes you happy. Let's call it good there. Let us know what you think about the fractional question. Do you buy one ounce gold only? Do you buy quarters, tenths, grams, silver, all of the above? Let us know. I'd like to see more perspective. And then while you're in the comments, be sure to hit that like button if you found any of this interesting. Be sure you're subscribed with notifications turned on if you'd like to see more on the topic. And if you're still here, thanks again for watching. I always appreciate your time. Take care.